In northern China lies a vast expanse known as the Taklamakan Desert, a golden sea of sand stretching over 337,000 square kilometers, where wind and dust once swallowed every trace of life. But today, amid that endless desert, green forests are slowly taking root, spreading all the way to the horizon. Once barren lands, and where sandstorms used to wipe out entire villages, are now coming back to life. The Chinese call this mission the Green Great Wall, an almost impossible ecological project and one of the largest restoration efforts on Earth. Hundreds of millions of trees have been planted and millions of hectares of land reclaimed from desertification. How did China manage to turn lifeless sand into land full of life? What secrets lie behind this billion-dollar project? Let's find out right now. For centuries, northern China has lived with an invisible enemy, sand. Each time monsoon winds swept down from the Gobi and Taklamakan deserts, massive dust storms blanketed the skies over Beijing, turning day into night. By the 1990s, there were years when residents in the capital had to wear masks for more than 80 days, just to avoid breathing in the fine dust blowing from the desert. The Taklamakan Desert was formed millions of years ago when the Tian Shan Mountains to the north and the Kunlun Mountains to the south blocked nearly all moisture from the Indian Ocean and Siberia, turning the basin between them into a vast arid wasteland. Average rainfall here is less than 100 millimeters per year, almost 10 times lower than in California, a region already known for its dry heat. To put that in perspective, every square meter of Taklamakan's land receives only about the same amount of water as a 500 milliliter bottle per week far too little for any plant to survive. In summer, temperatures can soar above 40 degrees Celsius. In winter, they can drop below 20 degrees Celsius. And sandstorms can strike anytime, without warning, without mercy. This extreme climate, combined with deforestation, overgrazing, and excessive groundwater extraction, exhausted the soil and destroyed vegetation paving the way for uncontrolled desertification to spread across northern China. Faced with the growing threat of desertification, China chose not to back down. In 1978, the government launched a century-scale initiative, the Three North Shelter Belt Program, known to the world as the Green Great Wall. This is not a single forest wall, but rather a vast network of thousands of forests, windbreak belts, and ecological lakes stretching more than 4,500 kilometers from the Xinjiang Autonomous Region all the way to Heilongjiang Province, covering nearly the entire northern part of China. The goal, to plant 35 million hectares of new forest by 2050, increasing the country's forest coverage from just 10% in 1949 to over 25% today. It is considered the largest human-made project ever built on land, not with concrete or steel, but with determination and the color green of life itself. From here, humanity's dream of reviving the dead lands truly began. So what exactly did the Chinese do in this billion-dollar program? They began not with concrete or heavy machinery, but with a measured plan. Across the Taklamakan Desert, Chinese engineers surveyed the terrain using satellite mapping and drones to analyze dune movement and wind direction. Based on those data, they designed a massive grid system. Straw checkerboards laid diagonally across the sand, each square about 20 by 20 feet. Across the burning dunes of western China, straw is spread out in neat geometric patterns. From above, the land looks like a gigantic checkerboard of golden squares stretching all the way to the horizon. Yet behind that simple image lies a massive engineering operation, complex, expensive, and carried out under brutal conditions. Millions of pounds of straw are transported hundreds of miles into the heart of the desert, where vehicles often sink into soft sand and paved roads simply don't exist. Once there, Teams of workers begin by digging shallow trenches and placing bundles of straw into precise grid lines. Under the relentless sun, 
With temperatures rising above 49 degrees Celsius and no shade in sight, every movement feels like a battle against heat and exhaustion. Still, thousands of Chinese workers persist. Because each grid of straw is more than just a barrier, it's the foundation for life to return. The woven pattern stabilizes the shifting dunes, slows the wind, and creates microzones where moisture can linger long enough for planting to begin. Once the grid is in place, mechanical augers and planting machines move in. These machines drill small holes at the center of each square, preparing the soil for drought-resistant species such as saxol, desert poplar, and red willow. The seedlings, carefully nurtured in nurseries before being brought to the desert, are then transplanted in each hole at the center of the straw grid. Each young plant is positioned with precision so that its fragile roots settle just below the surface, where the straw layer shields them from the scorching sun and the shifting sand. Workers add a measured amount of water and compact the soil around the base to ensure that the roots make full contact with the moist layer beneath. As weeks go by, the protective grid continues to serve its purpose. The straw keeps the surface cooler, reduces evaporation, and prevents the fine sand from eroding around the seedlings. Over time, the straw gradually decomposes through wind, dew, and microorganisms, turning into an organic blanket rich in nutrients. This natural fertilizer feeds the developing root systems, helping them extend deeper into the stable soil layers below. What began as a few fragile seedlings slowly evolves into a living network of vegetation, a green framework that anchors the dunes and begins the long process of reclaiming the desert. The second method of greening the desert, besides planting trees, is installing solar panels. In the middle of the Taklamakan, where sunlight beats down day and night, China has harnessed it to create a massive source of power for the entire region. China chose a bold solution. Let the sun grow the forest. This region receives over 2,700 hours of sunlight each year, ranking among the world's highest in solar radiation. Instead of letting the blazing sun scorch the sand, engineers turned it into a massive renewable power source. Along the Tarim Desert Highway, which stretches more than 436 kilometers across the desert, they installed 86 solar-powered pumping stations. Each station hosts hundreds of photovoltaic panels that generate electricity to pump groundwater from depths exceeding 100 meters. The water flows through an underground pipeline network and is distributed via drip irrigation, enabling more than 200,000 trees along the highway to survive in an area that sees almost no rainfall. As a result, the Tarim Highway has become the world's first carbon-free desert expressway, a place where sunlight generates electricity, electricity produces water, and water sustains life. To optimize space, the solar fields are elevated about two meters above the ground, allowing air to circulate freely and plants to grow beneath. The shaded soil beneath the panels retains more moisture and stays cooler, supporting species like licorice, red willow, and hawthorn, which form natural green zones under an artificial source of light and power. Here in Taklamakan, solar energy does more than light street lamps or power pumps. It illuminates hope for environmental renewal. When once known as the Sea of Death, this desert is now becoming one of the world's largest ecological laboratories where sunlight, technology, and human perseverance converge into one. From what was once seen as a hostile force, humanity has learned to turn sunlight into water and sand into forest. And in this land once called the Sea of Death, the sun itself has become the source of life. Alongside the solar panels, thousands of heliostat mirrors are arranged in wide arcs each rotating on two axes to follow the sun's path across the sky. The reflected light is concentrated onto the top of a central tower, where molten salt is heated to more than 540 degrees Celsius. That heat is then used to produce high-pressure steam, which drives turbines and generators to produce electricity. The excess heat is stored in molten salt tanks, allowing the plant to keep generating power steadily at night or during cloudy weather. 
It's estimated that building and operating this 50 megawatt solar power tower in the Taklamakan Desert costs around $130 million. Are you really impressed with this new Chinese technology? Let me know what you think. Beyond planting forests, stabilizing sand, and harnessing solar energy, China has also turned the edges of its deserts into ecotourism destinations. Along the borders of the Taklamakan and Gobi deserts, artificial forests, solar farms, and water reservoirs have been developed into combined science and tourism parks. In some areas, community-based tourism is growing, blending eco-lodging with Uyghur and Mongolian cultural traditions. Travelers can also join camel riding tours across the desert, lasting anywhere from two to five hours depending on the road passing through sweeping dunes and rest stops set up in the middle of the sands. Each trip costs between 40 and 120 US dollars. By combining conservation, education, and real-world experience, Taklamakan stands not just as a symbol of ecological restoration technology, but as proof that humans can live in harmony with nature. And to lead to this tourist area, the Chinese had to develop construction and roads. The Tarim Desert Highway, one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects in Western China. Built to connect the oasis cities of Luntai and Minfeng, it cuts straight through the heart of the desert for over 300 kilometers. Construction started in 1993 and the highway officially opened on October 4, 1995, after just over two years of work under extreme conditions, shifting dunes, sandstorms, and temperatures exceeding 50 degrees Celsius. The project cost around 1.75 billion yuan, or roughly 260 million US dollars. Beneath the asphalt lies a complex foundation of gravel, straw mats, and geotextiles designed to keep the sand from swallowing the road. Today, this desert highway not only links remote solar farms and research stations, but also serves as a gateway for ecotourism, guiding travelers through what was once one of the most unreachable landscapes on Earth. After decades of relentless effort, the results have far exceeded all expectations. Vast green belts now surround almost the entire Taklamakan Desert. According to official data, China has re-greened more than 30 million hectares of barren land, increasing national forest coverage from 10% in 1949 to over 25% today. In regions like Aksu and Kakea, once nothing but endless dunes, now stretch vast forests of poplar, hawthorn, almond, and walnut trees reaching all the way to the horizon. Scientists estimate that the frequency of sandstorms has dropped by 82% compared to the 1980s, while the number of dusty days in Kakea has fallen from around 100 days to just 30 per year. The once dead lands now absorb more than 20,000 tons of CO2 annually, forming what many call the desert's green lungs. Once known as the Sea of Death, the desert has, at last, learned to breathe. But not everyone agrees that this new green landscape marks a lasting victory. As the numbers grow, so do the questions. Is this greenery truly sustainable, or just a temporary shade of green? Uh, many ecologists warn that monoculture reforestation, planting mostly poplars and willows, leaves the ecosystem vulnerable. These trees grow fast, but they have short lifespans and rely heavily on groundwater. At one point, a disease outbreak wiped out more than a billion poplar trees across northern China, erasing years of hard-earned progress. Several international studies also suggest that in certain periods, desertification continued to expand despite the reported increase in forested area. The reason lies in planting trees unsuited to local conditions, rainfall too low to sustain growth, and prolonged irrigation that further depletes groundwater reserves. Experts now argue that for the Green Great Wall to truly thrive, China must shift focus from the number of trees planted to the health of entire ecosystems, replacing single-species forests with mixed woodlands that include native trees, grasses, and shrubs. Only by restoring nature in its original, balanced structure can humanity hope to resist the desert in a truly sustainable way. The success of the Green Great Wall is undeniable, yet it comes with an important reminder. Not every green is life if its roots do not belong to the soil beneath it. 
So you've just explored the full journey of how China is turning its deserts green. From barren dunes to living landscapes powered by sunlight and science. What do you think about this transformation? A miracle of nature or a triumph of human engineering? Share your thoughts in the comments and stay tuned for more stories of innovation and discovery in the next videos on Mandarin Tech.